Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I'm John and today we're going to take a look at a Raspberry Pi 10.1 inch touchscreen with housing for your Pi. This device supports both the Raspberry Pi 3 as well as the Pi 4 and allows you to connect to other devices such as a PC, gaming devices, phones, or most anything with an HDMI output. Let's check it out. Let's take a look at some of the features of the Evicive Raspberry Pi 10.1 inch touchscreen. It has a 10 point capacitive touch IPS display at 1366 by 768. It has a 60 hertz refresh rate, it's plug and play, built in stereo speakers, 3.5 millimeter audio output jack, menu control of the fan and rotating the screen and quite a few more features. The stand is foldable and it supports both the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4. This device was sent to me to provide a fair and honest review of the product. The packaging is similar to that of the Raspberry Pi itself. Not much information here, so let's go ahead and open the box. And here we have the touch screen itself with the case on the back or housing in order to install the Raspberry Pi. And we'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4 in this video. Let's see what else we have in the box. Looks like a USB-C to USB-C cable. And here we have the touch screen cable as well as some screws and a screwdriver. And a USB type A to USB type C cable. And some plates to go over the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4. So yeah, you could use either type of Raspberry Pi you wish. And these are some adapters for both the Pi 3 and the Pi 4 an HDMI cable and a 12 volt 2000 milliamp power supply and a very well written user's manual which pretty much steps you through the entire process I'm gonna go ahead and read this and we'll move on to assembling the unit you will need a Raspberry Pi in this case I'm gonna use a Raspberry Pi 8 gigabyte model keep in mind a Pi is not included in the package I've already installed the latest version of Twister OS to this micro SD card and we'll use it for this build. I put a towel down on my workbench to make sure I don't damage or scratch the display at all. Now we'll just remove all six screws and yeah there's one hidden in here just to make you aware of that. Here let me turn it around so you can see a little better. So we'll go ahead and get that little booger out. There we go. Use caution when you remove the back cover there is a fan that's already attached to it, so we'll just set that over here. It is nice that they included a fan, although this one can get pretty loud. Fortunately, in the menu settings, you can turn the fan on or off. Now I'll remove the cover plate, and I'll adjust the orientation here so you can see it better. I'm going to take the Raspberry Pi 4 and go ahead and fit the correct Raspberry Pi 4 faceplate over the back. There is some thin plastic covering the screw holes, so you'll have to apply a little bit of extra pressure to get the screws through the mounting holes. I'm just going to go ahead and set the Raspberry Pi 4 in here temporarily. There are some more pieces we need to connect. The first one we'll look at is this HDMI-A, which is used for a Raspberry Pi 3. So, of course, we will not be using it for this particular build. Uh, the Type-C we will be using. This is for the power input. And this one is a micro USB, which we will not be using. And this one we will. This is the HDMI. We'll go ahead and plug in the HDMI connector first. And you want to make sure you get it seated. Very good. There we go. Now we'll plug in the USB-C connector. And now we can slide this assembly down into the base. It's just a little bit tricky trying to get these connectors in when you can't really see it there in the corner. But as you can see... No pins are exposed, so we've got them all seated on there properly. There are a couple of ways you can hook up the USB for the touch screen, but I'm going to go ahead and go with this connector and feed it through the bottom panel here. And it is keyed. You'll see a little notch here, so go ahead and install that accordingly in the connector over there by the USB ports. And go ahead and plug it into one of the USB 2.0 ports. Now we'll take these four small screws and install them into their locations here. There we go. There's one, two, three, and four. Now I'll just quickly go over each of the screws to make sure that they're fully tightened down. 
everything seems good and we'll go ahead and put the back panel over it. One thing I do want to mention at this point, there is no cutout for the GPIO, so let's say you wanted to install a ribbon cable, you would not be able to do so with this case. I briefly want to explain the ports available on this device. The 12 volt power adapter plugs in here. The Type-C port is to provide touchscreen support to a PC or other device. There is an HDMI input port to allow connecting any HDMI devices to the display and a 3.5 millimeter audio output jack. On the back of the panel you have access to the options. The first is the power button which will turn on the display as well as the Raspberry Pi. Next is the menu button which will allow you to adjust the video input source, fan control, and screen rotation as well as many other options. There is an up and down button for the selection and of course a back button as well. I'm going to go ahead and hook up a keyboard and mouse initially to get everything set up. We'll go ahead and plug in the keyboard and mouse and plug in the power. I press the power button on the back to turn on the device and boot up Twister OS. Now let's take a closer look. One of the first things I wanted to try after powering this thing up was to go ahead and load up a graphics program. So I'm going to load up GIMP. I don't know that this is necessarily a good use case for using this touch screen, but uh, it was certainly fun. I enjoyed it. I, I could imagine kids having a blast with it too. I think it's certainly a good test. I mean, it does show that it is responsive. Okay, next I wanted to install a keyboard that I could use to type stuff in. So I entered sudo apt install matchbox keyboard. I don't know that this is necessarily the best keyboard to use. However, it does work. If you go to accessories and then go down to the very bottom, you can right click and add to panel. And what this does is it adds the keyboard to the lower right of the display. So now if you're in an application where you need to type something, you can just tap the little icon in the lower right and type in through this virtual keyboard, whatever it is you need. I'm going to go to wagnerstechtalk.com and hit enter and it'll bring up my website. The touch screen is very responsive. I actually kind of enjoyed browsing this way. Now I'll go ahead and close out of the virtual keyboard, make the window full screen, and yeah, work pretty good. Next we'll try out the screen rotation feature. So if I go to display, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it left at 90 degrees. Go ahead and apply it. While there's no drivers or anything you have to install in order to get the touch screen to work, you do need to go into the menu and let it know that you've rotated the screen. So we'll go in here and say touch screen rotation and we'll set it for 90 degrees. And that's good. We'll go ahead and exit out of the menu. And now you can operate the touch screen on the Raspberry Pi in portrait mode. And then I thought I'd start up LibreOffice Writer and go ahead and type something in real quick. I'm not very good with the virtual keyboard, so I'm going to speed it up here for you. So if you enjoy touch typing on a virtual keyboard, hey, you may enjoy it. Next, I wanted to try the Retroid Pocket 2. So I hooked up a micro HDMI cable to the HDMI port here and the other end into the back of the unit. From there, it's simply a matter of changing the input source over to HDMI input. And there's the display coming from the handheld. And we'll play a little bit of Earth Defense Zen Pinball. And it plays very well. For this next test, I borrowed my wife's Galaxy S20 cell phone and plugged it in and went ahead and changed the input over to that. And Dex indicated that it doesn't support the resolution that's provided, but I didn't actually have any issues with it. It seemed to work fine. I browsed through our applications, played a few games. Everything seemed to work fine, including the audio output to the stereo speakers in the device. And this wouldn't be a complete test if I didn't hook it up to a PC as well. So yeah, it worked fine. One thing to note, you will need to plug in both the HDMI cable, the USB-C cable, and the power cable for it to work. Now I'll talk about what I like about this product and what can be improved. First off, what I like. The touchscreen can be rotated and it's pretty cool and easy to do. The fan can be controlled through the menu. It's either on or off. And it does have an HDMI input, which is rather unique for devices like this. 
And the display looks nice and the touchscreen works rather well. As far as what can be improved, there's no cutout for the GPIO ribbon cable. I would like to see that in perhaps a future model. And the display resolution is rather unusual at 1366 by 768. The fan can be a little bit loud and the micro SD card is not easily accessible. Well, that's it for another video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you very soon.